While the date of the Nikon ZF announcement is still up in the air, we do have clarification on a few specs. Will it have dual card slots, a stacked sensor? Stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, formerly known as X, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, helps get this channel noticed, and most importantly, it keeps you up to date on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Nikon Rumors says that the Nikon ZF will have two card slots instead of the single card slot it reported in a previous story. And this has been a point of disagreement between Nikon Rumors and Sony Alpha Rumors, which has started covering this camera. So previously, Nikon Rumors had said it had a single card slot, and for a price of $19.99, I thought this to be a little bit strange. I mean, for me personally, any camera that costs more than $1,500 or $2,000, as is the case here, um, if it doesn't have dual card slots, to me, I think that's a definite kick in the teeth. It needs to have dual card slots. Whereas Sony Alpha Rumor said that, yes, it is going to have dual card slots. It's also going to be $19.99. But they differed on something else, which we'll get to shortly, and that's all about the stacked sensor. And now for the next update, Nikon Rumor says the Nikon ZF will have some kind of new high-resolution mode that will be implemented for the first time in a Nikon mirrorless camera. There is one thing I do want to talk about a bit, and that is the contradictions that we're seeing between Nikon rumors that normally covers all things Nikon and has been very accurate with the Nikon Z8, the Nikon Z9, with the exception of the images for the Nikon Z8. Those were completely false. They were pants. And then, of course, now Sony Alpha Rumors is covering the Nikon ZF. And so initially, Nikon Rumors said we were going to get an announcement on August the 2nd, and it was going to be for a new retro-looking cool camera the Nikon ZF. It's going to have a single card slot and sell for around $19.99. Going to have a slightly more metallic, more durable body than what we see in the Nikon ZFC. Well, Sony Alpha Rumors came out and said, yeah, nope, um, I don't think so. It's going to be the same price, but it's going to have dual card slots. And that August, the second date, that's not going to happen. It is going to happen very soon. It's going to happen sometime in August. And um, you know what? They got that right. It didn't happen on August the 2nd. And now Nikon Rumors are saying that we're going to have dual card slots and not one. Again, another point to Sony Alpha Rumors. And this is very strange. This is very strange indeed to see Sony Alpha Rumors getting things correct about the Nikon ZF and Nikon Rumors getting them wrong. Nikon Rumors has said that, um, well, recently they've said that it's going to have somewhere between 24 and 25 megapixels. So maybe 24.2, that's a common resolution for Canon cameras, 24.6 or anything in between. But it's not going to have a stack sensor. Whereas Sony Alpha Rumors, they're saying, oh no, it's going to have somewhere between 45 and 46 megapixels, 45.7 for example. That's a very common sensor resolution we see on Nikon cameras. And by the way, it's going to be stacked. And stacked would be a big deal. And a 45 megapixel stack sensor on a $2,000 camera, uh, that would be pretty impressive. Now, one thing to pay attention to, remember Fujifilm, I think it's the X-H2 or the X-H2S, I can't remember which one, but it does have a stack sensor for $24.99. So it, it, it isn't kind of earth shattering that Nikon would do this at $2,000. But um, it is rather surprising. But at 45 megapixels, what would make sense to me is something like 26 megapixels, 24 megapixels at $2,000. And then, sure, go ahead and make it stacked. I think there's certainly benefits to that. But there's a lot of contradictions here. And while Sony Alpha Rumors has gotten more things correct, I'm, I'm not so sure that I'm willing to believe it's going to have a stacked sensor. It could. And um, I've also been receiving sources telling me things about this as well, telling me that, yes, the last one said it's definitely going to have a stack sensor, but we, we haven't been able to validate that. And then previously I had another source saying, no, it's not going to have a stack sensor. It doesn't make sense for a camera in this price point. The main point of this camera is to deliver a retro looking cool camera that is, well, able to get the job done, able to do work that you're going to need at a price point of $1,999, a good solid camera. Um, so the, the specs are all over the place. And some of the other things, um, uh, the date, um, Sony Alpha Rumors is still saying that it's going to be announced very soon. My sources are telling me very soon, whereas Nikon Rumors is saying, well, August or September. So a two month range there. And that's a pretty significant range. I don't know what to think here. This is, and, and I've been, <laughs> I've been covering the Nikon ZF for how many weeks now? 
And you, you would expect the closer we get to an announcement that things would clarify a bit better, congeal, solidify, validate, and I, I don't seem to see that at this point. Now, dual card slots and Nikon rumors and Sony Alpha rumors agreeing on that, that's a big deal. But if you look at all the other specifications, which I'm not going to talk about, but I'm going to list them right here, none of them by themselves are all that impressive. And it's a good solid camera. But one thing that really kind of makes a huge difference that gets people's attention is if you deliver all of this and you deliver a stack sensor, that is a really big deal. And even if it isn't a stack sensor and it's just a backside illuminated sensor, that's still a big deal. Because if you recall, what a backside illuminated sensor allows you to do is get better low light performance. It gives you better dynamic range. It's also about, it's all about improving the image that you're getting because of how the sensors architected. Whereas a stack sensor is a little bit different. Now it gives you all that same stuff that a backside illuminated sensor gives you, but it's able to process information a whole lot faster. So eliminating or not eliminating, but significantly reducing things such as rolling shutter is one example of a benefit of a stack sensor. But also to be able to shoot at a much faster continuous frame rate, to be able to get the data off the sensor through the image processor, processor and onto the storage is a big deal. And if it's got dual CF Express cards, that would be amazing. Then there's no mention if they're dual CF Express cards or dual SD cards. CF Express cards, even the slowest ones, has, have a maximum sustain write speed of usually somewhere around, I think, 800 megabytes per second. That's the slowest ones. And they go all the way up to about 1.5 gigabytes per second, such as the Angelbird AV Pros. But SD cards, even the fastest ones, the V90 by Angelbird, has a maximum sustained write speed of 260 megabytes per second. So in terms of high-speed continuous, and again, at $2,000, we're not expecting 20 frames per second. Anywhere around 8, 10, or 12 frames per second is more than adequate. You might notice that I've got pre-order links down below for the Nikon ZF. They are what I call smart pre-order links. As we're expecting multiple different body kit forms, well, body alone, uh, multiple kit forms, and then, of course, stores like Adorama and B&H, they're rather large stores, and they often put out their own packages, such as the body and a lens, or allow you to choose different lenses, as well as offering camera bags and storage and all that sort of stuff. So on the date of announcements, which we don't know what that's going to be yet, but on that date of announcement, as soon as the embargo is lifted, if you copy these links and use them, um, it's going to list off every single option at either B&H or Adorama, so that way you can very quickly determine which package you want, or just the body alone, and that way you can get yourself a little further in the queue, so you can get the camera before anybody else. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest news and rumors <laughs> regarding the Nikon ZF, because this thing is all over the place and we don't have any validation yet, then um, one thing you want to do is go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. You also want to follow me on Twitter. Now, normally on Twitter, I cover all those minor news and rumor stories or pricing information that, well, they're not big enough to have their own separate video. But I also tweet out daily videos as well. So ordinary, uh, ordinary filmmaker, Twitter, sorry, I keep forgetting that Elon has changed the name to X, whatever you want to call it, X or Twitter, uh, go ahead and follow me there because um, you, you'll get all the latest and updated information. And then if I put out a video, I'll have a link there to where you can go ahead and watch the video. But it is a very exciting time. I sense this is a bit of a build up to what we expect to see this fall. We're expecting announcements from all the major camera companies, Sony, Nikon, not just the ZF. A lot of us are waiting to see what's happening with the Nikon Z6 Mark III, correct? And how this Nikon ZF could help set up that camera. Because after all, the Nikon ZF is in that same price point. Could it just be a retro retro looking cool camera that basically has the innards of what's going to be in the Nikon Z6 Mark III? I don't know. If that was the case, I'd expect the Nikon Z6 Mark III to come out first. We're also expecting camera announcements from Canon and Panasonic. It's been over four years, four and a half years, since Panasonic announced the S1 and the S1R, and four years since they announced the S1H. So we're definitely expecting a refresh there. Really do expect an exciting fall. And once we get through that, we'll have a short break for Christmas before Canon's going to hit us hard with the R5 Mark II and the EOS R1. Their flagship camera, they're the last of all the major camera companies to come out and release and announce their full frame mirrorless flagship camera. And um, it, it's there's a lot of buildup here. No matter who I talk to, they're saying that this camera 
is going to be the best of the best. Everyone's expecting Ken to come here and hit it out of the park. I mean, after all, Sony Alpha Rumors has already come out with their Alpha One and said, look, this is our best. And rumors are that they're going to be announcing the successor to that camera at the end of this year. We've got Nikon with their Z9, and that's a couple of years old, so we might be close to a ref refresh there. So if you look at all of those cameras as a base, well, that's where the R1's gonna sit because Canon knows what the competition's already got up their sleeves. They know they're getting ready for a refresh, so Canon's gonna hit hard with the best of the best for the pros, for those that can afford it. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day, and we'll see you again soon.